Well, indeed, uh, Fabio Panetta was the most explicit in terms of how far the ECB should go uh, in terms of yield curve control, because that's what we're uh, talking about. Explicitly, implicitly, the ECB is indeed trying to keep an overall constellation of uh, financing conditions at a level that they deem favorable. But as you just said, we need to understand what exactly it means in terms of financing, con financing conditions and uh, what it means to uh, preserve them at a favorable level. And if indeed there is a widespread disagreement within the governing council in terms of what it means in practice, this is a problem for markets. On top of that, uh, she, uh, Christine Lagarde will uh, have the question uh, uh, probably at the beginning of the press conference uh, asking her why uh, the ECB did not increase the pace of net PEP purchases over the past couple of weeks. So it makes up for a quite tricky communication exercise uh, and we'll see uh, whether or not there will be a compromise. Well, the thing about the PEP is that, uh, I mean, the, what they would argue is that there have been quite sizable redemptions, which is the reason why the overall net purchase number is looking low. But surely they are aware of that. I mean, the operations team know that these redemptions are coming. If they wanted to offset it, they could easily have gone more aggressive on the purchases. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in theory, we shouldn't care at all about weekly numbers, even about no uh, monthly numbers, to be honest, because those redemptions can be very large. Actually, last week we had even an SMP uh, redemption from back 10 years ago. So this is something that the ECB should not, absolutely not uh, be influenced from, and, and this should not be our focus. But since we have this now strong emphasis on uh, the actual pace of PEP purchases and how, to which extent the governing council can indeed increase them. Now the focus is back on the executive board in particular, because this is my worry, uh, perhaps um, be below uh, and beyond everything we've heard so far, to which extent exactly the executive board, the six permanent members of the ECB, uh, are able to control the actual pace of uh, pet purchases in real time. So if she gets the question today and doesn't provide an answer in terms of next Monday or over the next uh, couple of weeks PEP number, then it could mean that indeed uh, the ECB is not fully in control uh, in terms of this particular program, which is a, also a program uh, for, for markets at this point. Now, um, Frederick, in addition, in addition to uh, looking out for comments around the uh, PEP program, we're also going to get new forecasts from the ECB, uh, their March 2021 staff forecast. Do you think there's scope that they could uh, end up being more optimistic than they were last time around? It's all about inflation, because to be honest, uh, the growth projections, uh, uh, it's a non-event. We know that the recovery has been postponed. We know that hope remains that both uh, vaccination picks up and uh, the implementation of the EU recovery fund provides additional fiscal support later this year into 2022. This story hasn't changed much and there will be some uh, uh, adjustment, if uh, anything, also because oil prices are 20% stronger, higher than three months ago. But it shouldn't be a big story for markets. The big story is inflation. First this year, because of the last couple of prints, which have been much stronger than expected uh, because of technical factors mostly. So the ECB will look through the noise, I believe. And more importantly, in terms of the medium term projection, 2023, remember that core inflation is projected to be very low, 1.2%, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, well below the target of the ECB, obviously. And the question to me is to which extent the ECB becomes more confident about the medium term outlook for inflation, given everything we've had around the world. And I think this includes the US fiscal package, uh, absolutely uh, critical for global growth prospects. Well, on that note, um, clearly the big story for bond markets has started in the US with the rise in treasury yields, and we've seen European yields follow suit to a large degree. How tied are the destinies of European bond yields to U.S. Treasury yields? In other words, if the Fed decides not to push back too aggressively against a rise in yields, uh, is the Europeans' hands fairly tied and are we inevitably going to see European yields rise in turn, regardless of what the ECB does? Yeah. Absolutely. I think there is a very high correlation first uh, in global bond markets, uh, but also uh, it's the key focus of today's press conference. It's a difficult exercise for Christine Lagarde because we're talking about a lot of indicators, nominal bond yields, real bond yields, corporate spreads, lending standouts, et cetera, et cetera, and the currency as well. But in the end, that's something she said uh, during one of her recent speeches at the EU parliament. She said 
that the most important indicator was indeed government bond yields and nominal bond yields uh, in particular, because we know that it's a benchmark for the rest of the market. We know that it's a very important reference and obviously also uh, in the context of uh, a huge fiscal uh, stimulus uh, also in Europe uh, in over the next couple of years. So I think the focus should really come down to this. Uh, whether or not the ECB targets a specific level of the 10 year, I don't think so. But whether uh, the ECB can really emphasize the importance of uh, bond deals, government bond deals within the world constellation and financing conditions. I think that's not easy as an exercise, but that's probably the most likely uh, result of the discussion they've had since yesterday night.